Saipan to Tokyo, Tokyo to Seattle, Seattle to Amsterdam, and Amsterdam to Tanzania. Africa is about as far away as you can get from the Mariana Islands. Our goal, to climb the highest freestanding mountain in the world, Kilimanjaro, 19,341 feet above sea level. Preparation started here in Saipan with a visit to see Dr. Tony Stearns. Malaria is a concern in Tanzania as well as yellow fever. Neither sounds nice. Shots and medicine were in order. It's not a technical climb, but there are some safety concerns because of the high altitude and the extreme temperatures. In fact, about 10 climbers a year die on Mount Kilimanjaro and another 10 to 15 porters perish, although good statistics are hard to come by. This month is both the best and the worst time to climb. The best because there aren't many people. The worst because it's rainy season, which frequently means rain at the bottom and snow at the top. After a short bus ride, we arrive at the Kilimanjaro Park headquarters. The rest of the way is up on foot. The porters have the hard jobs. They carry much of the gear that is needed for the five to eight day expedition. Food, tents, water, and cooking gear all go up the mountain on their heads. <laughs> the guide is the chief and the porters work for him. The guide's job is to keep the team moving and watch out for signs of altitude sickness. My guide is Jackson, father of two, a veteran of 50 expeditions, some successful, others not. It really depends on the weather and the climber. Poli poli is the Swahili word you hear most often. It means slowly. Because of the altitude, you do not want to climb too fast. You need to give your body time to acclimatize. Day one's pretty easy. We gradually make our way up through the rainforest with monkeys above showing off with some serious leaps. But the weather is not cooperating and we are frequently hiking in heavy clouds and rain, which means we can't see where we're going and the peak of Kilimanjaro remains hidden from view. After a few hours, we reach Mandara Hut. Here, we will spend the night, altitude 8,862 feet. Day two starts off clear and we hit the trail hopeful for better weather, but the sun departs quickly and the rain is back. After six hours of slogging in the rain, we reach Harumbo Hut, altitude 12,150 feet. We go to sleep and wake up to a nice view. Okay, day three, just after sunrise, we get our first glimpse this morning of the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. The clouds have, uh, have moved and we can see where we're going. Today is hike high, sleep low day. We head up the mountain to gain some altitude and then head right back down and stay another night at Harumbo Hut. Day four, it's starting to get cold. We have a six hour hike to Kibo Hut, which is where we will make our push for the summit. We attempt to grab a few hours of sleep at 15,480 feet, but no sleep for me. I have a splitting headache and feel about as bad as I've ever felt. My guy Jackson says, don't worry, that's normal. Let me know if you feel worse. I don't know if I can feel worse, I say. No problem, he says. We depart at midnight, and though we have headlamps, we don't really need them as a full moon lights up the switchbacks. I'm now actually feeling a little bit worse, but I didn't come all this way to turn around, so up, up, and up we go. We climb all night. About six in the morning, the sun begins to light our way, and finally, we are there, Uhuru Peak. The roof of Africa, 19,340 feet, temperature minus 10, skies clear, smiles all the way around. All right, Jackson, good job. Welcome. Congratulations. I take Jackson's picture and then he takes mine with mixed results. Let's try that again, Jackson. This time, move your fingers. Okay, that's better. Mount Kilimanjaro, Tanzania, Africa. Chris Nelson for the Channel 2 News.